Okay, so um, I actually cleaned up today and I, I've been thinking about 90 Day Fiance. In particular, I want to talk about Darcy. Um, Darcy and Jesse, Darcy and Tom, but mainly Darcy, okay? Right? So Darcy is like this, <laughs> I want to call her a character, but I guess she's a real person, right? But Darcy is this woman that you, you, it just, she's like super infuriating, but she's also super relatable um, because she has these massive vulnerabilities that just cannot stay away from the camera. And, and sometimes it's just so embarrassing to watch. But here's the thing about Darcy. In her relationship with Jesse and her relationship with Tom, she was single-minded about the things she wanted, which was the engagement, right? She wanted to seal the deal, have the ring, like have the fiance, like that was the goal, that was the purpose, that was the thing that she wanted. And she wanted it so much, she held on to it so tightly that it pushed away the people who were actually attached to this expectation. And I'm not saying that those people were the right people for her, but she was thinking so much less about the person than she was about the thing that she wanted. Okay, like, and I see this all the time, um, that we have this idea of what we want, right? We want, uh, I, I have a friend actually, this is a perfect, um, but this person I know who just has this idea of what he thinks like love is supposed to look like and this idea of what he wants his future to be. Um, and he's so fixated on this one idea that he's got beautiful things in front of him that he just like doesn't even see because it doesn't match the vision of what he has. But the problem, or the vision of what he wants. So the problem is this thing that he wants, he pushes away because he's holding on to it too tight and he's not living his life every day in ways that match the vibration of the thing that he wants. You know, and this is a, this is the Darcy thing, right? She wants the engagement, she wants the relationship, she wants the blah, 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 but she's not doing the things that would put her in the place to attract the things to her. She's chasing, she's pursuing, she's holding on to them and they slip away from her. Okay, so this is what I'm thinking about Darcy. She's this perfect example of the way that we're conditioned to desire things and then once we have the thing that we want we have to desire something else it's just this constant wanting this constant yearning this constant longing and i was thinking about uh about lacan about jacques lacan and um and freudian psychoanalysis in this regard and i'm totally going to butcher this and if anybody watching this video can identify the ways in which i butchered it i'm just so glad you're watching i don't freaking care so Lacan has an explanation for the way that we constantly want the thing that we can't have. And he explains this. Can you hear my cat screaming on the porch, by the way? I had to get outside. It's so nice out here. Uh, and Leo's, I don't know what he's doing, but he's really loud. Um, but Lacan, but Jacques Lacan, um, the psychoanalyst, um, posits that once we as humans become part of the world of language. We enter into this symbolic trap that we can never escape because language is purely symbolic, right? So for the word cat, like the one screaming on the porch, for the word cat, there is no thing attached to the word, right? The word is a symbol. And once we enter this symbolic world, like what we can never get back to the pre-linguistic world once we're in it. And we have a yearning to get back to it. We want to get out of the trap that we're in. We want to get out of this symbolic trap. So we have this yearning to get back to the, he calls it the real with a capital R. And this desire for the real, this desire to get back there is something that becomes displaced onto what Lacan refers, refers to as the objet A which is we have this yearning, we want this thing we want, which is the real. We want to get back to this world, which was authentic, which was pure, which was pre-symbolic, but we can't do that. So we take that desire we have for that and we displace it onto something else. And that something else is the objet A, right? So in layman's terms, I guess you could say you're renting an apartment and you want the house. And then once you get the house, you want the bigger house. And then once you get the bigger house, you want the remodeled kitchen, right? 
you always want the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. We're not actually happy or content or satisfied getting the thing that we want because we're conditioned to keep wanting because we haven't gotten the thing we really want, right? The question is, what is it we really want? I could ask this of my friend, we want. Like you have a picture, an image, a symbol of what you want, but what's the feeling underneath? What's the, what does that relationship feel like that you want? Like that's the thing that you go for, right? Not what it looks like, not the symbol of it, but what's it, so what's, what's the feeling that you want, right? So what I like about this concept of the objet ah is that it's fundamentally honest. We keep wanting all these things, but that's not what we really want. Darcy wants the ring, she wants the engagement. I don't think that's what she really wants because when she had it, or has it or gets close to it, she's gonna want something else. And you can just see by the way she kind of manages her body, right? She has had all this plastic surgery. There's, there's constant like wanting something different, more better than what she has, right? So my question is, what do you really want? Like, what do you really want? What do any of us really want? And I think that's the benefit of understanding something in that, um, in that Lacanian sense. So, now understanding that we are conditioned to want, we're conditioned to desire, and we're conditioned to be kind of owned by our constantly um, migrating desires, right? The object ah, jumps from thing to thing to thing to thing. It explains religion, right? Every world religion is a set of rules, a set of instructions on, as Richard Grannon would say, how to make your life suck less. Because we all feel trapped in this world where we want more, where we desire something else, where we're always the better job, the more money job, the more responsibility job, the, the more, the more, the more, like we, it's a trap and we feel it, right? So of course religion has a place in our lives because it's an instruction manual of how to surrender, how to surrender your desire, how to surrender um, your ambition, how to, how to give it all up. And I'm don't ascribe to any particular religion. I just find it really interesting. And all these religions are, are disciplines too. And, and I think that's one of the reasons we really, really suck at religion is because you have to be very disciplined to follow that rule book, right? To make your life suck less. But the essence of those religions is the same. It's, it's acceptance and it's surrender and it's giving it up to something, a higher power than you because living with this constant desire is exhausting. What if, you know, and maybe this is the essence of mindfulness, right? Like maybe the reason why we're so drawn to mindfulness as a practice and the reason it's so difficult is mindfulness forces us to just be here, be now, look at what we have right now. That person playing Scrabble with you, right? You're cleaning out the refrigerator, you're making dinner, you're in this moment and how to be in that moment so fully that you're not yearning for the thing that's not there. Because desire is always about absence. It's always about what's not there. And that is tragic. That is, that is a really hard thing to live with every day, looking at the absence. When in truth, Don't we all have everything we need? Like really? It's some fundamental way we have everything that we need. And let's be honest then about the thing that we want. It's not about the thing, that's a symbol. You, know, you want that job, why? What's the feeling it's gonna give you? You wanna date that person, why? You wanna keep dating random people, you want to, pursue people you want to I mean this keeps coming up because of this idea of the and for me around the dopamine rush around like romance the idea that we've just have this idea of what love is supposed to look like we have this idea and instead of being honest like really just honest with ourselves and saying okay what's the feeling what's the experience and then when you're honest about that, the symbol will come. But we're so tied to what it's supposed to look like that we just lose the experience altogether. And it's not honest. 
I mean, it's, it's the biggest lie we tell ourselves. Oh, I'll be happy when I meet this person. I'll be happy when I have this. I'll be happy when I can do that. Why apply for that big job? What's it gonna give you? What is it you really want? Like, what do we want? Not the image, not the symbol, but what's like the essence of it. Lacan says, you know, we want the things we want because our desire really is to get back to this other authentic place. So I guess my question is, what is that authentic place for you? What's that authentic place for me? <laughs> I got it. I write about it in my journal. I'm working on it. I don't have any answers, but it's a discipline. I'm figuring it out. What is the thing that you really want? What is the experience you want to have? What are the feelings that you want to have? Be honest. Just be honest.